What's up, guys? My name is Mad Squash 924 Welcome back to another episode of Night Call Part 3, where we are a taxi driver who is investigating a murderer. And you guys might notice um, we are here. It says, you open one eye. You know, I don't remember we leaving off here. It just kind of put me here. Um, let's see what happens. Fragments of a dream are still lingering. A strange animal, half deer, half seahorse, was trying to kiss you on the mouth. You get up quickly to forget all that. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Oh, that's cool. So it just picks up like we just had a dream. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Let's see here. Do we have anything that we could go to? Anybody we can go to currently? Uh, not really. Um, let's go to this one. They're pretty close. At this point, we gotta start thinking about fuel, who are you picking up, etc., etc. Uh, this is Grace and Dogo. She wants to go very far away. All right, let's go. Your next passenger has been crying. She stares at the floor and gives you an address in the nearby suburbs. You've just started driving when her telephone rings. The ringtone is familiar. Yes. There's a pause. Her tone is sharp. Kurt. Yes, I'm on my way home right now. She pauses, holds her breath. Yes. Another pause. She sounds annoyed. No, I took a taxi. On the other end, a voice gets louder. Who's paying? Well, I am. I... Don't want to take the bus home tonight. Come on, lay off. A new round of criticism begins. Look, can you just lay off? Yeah. Yeah. Y we'll talk about it when I get back. She holds the phone away from her ear, ready to hang up, then pulls it back. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm here. She finally glances at you. There's no need to scream. I can hear you. I told you we'll talk about it when I get home. Uh, we're about to enter a tunnel, miss. She smiles. No, that was the driver saying we're going to be cut off. N no, he seems normal. Mom, I... M hmm. I said it's break. She hangs up. <sighs> thank you. <sighs> thank you. You hear a ring, the same tune as before. The young woman hesitates, turns the phone over in her hand and decides not to answer. Sorry. It's no problem. To be honest, I really didn't want to go home. My mother is waiting to have a long, very long discussion about my future, my career, all the sacrifices she's made for me. She's a cleaning woman in one of the fancy office buildings at La Defense, and I failed my bar exam, so she thinks she stops herself. She was going to make a joke, but something keeps her from doing so. Her smile vanishes. <sighs> she thinks I'll end up as a cleaning woman at La Defense. Your passenger sighs. <sighs> she thinks I dance too much. She thinks it's La Mes fault. But mostly she thinks it's my fault. 
She heaves a huge sigh and stares at nothing outside. I studied, I worked hard, but I didn't pass. I just don't believe in all that anymore. Now, be warned, what I'm about to say will sound cliche, but I want to be a dancer, not a lawyer. My mother doesn't understand. You must work to earn money in order to succeed. She takes a deep breath. Sorry, I didn't mean to unload on you. It must seem like a pretentious little... Uh, yeah, I must seem like a pretentious little princess. Uh, it's fine, not at all. Thanks. Thanks for lying. She smiles. The address she gave you is not much farther. I mean, I know I owe my mother a lot, I have to stop being so self-centered, blah, 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 and I have to pass this fucking exam. She clicks her tongue as if to force herself to stop talking. Instead, she keeps going. Mind you, she came to like May's performance. She pauses, tries to find her words. She saw me dance and when we left, it's... Uh, it's kind of dumb, but she didn't say a single word. And uh, I think I've never felt prouder. Her silence spoke a thousand words. You pull up to her house. She takes her time getting out of the car. I... I don't know why I said all that. But it felt really good. Thank you. She disappears. Her tears have definitely vanished. Got some money. Need that money. Especially after the intel we have acquired. Okay. We have many people to pick up. And there's no one that it recommends us with that little golden border. Because before I had a little golden border, which is kind of glow slightly, but... Let's pick up a guy. I haven't picked up a guy in a while. Besides the last guy that was a douche. The passenger who's entered your cab... Oh, this is not who I thought I was picking up. The passenger who's entered your cab slams the door and stares at you intently. Uh, can I help you? I don't know yet. Although the real question is, how can you help yourself? Um... Do we know each other? She gives you a sour laugh. <laughs> Don't play innocent with me. If I were to say to you... Her voice is slightly raspy, with an oddly metallic sound. October 27th? That's the date, the night of the attack. The night you... Could this woman be... The judge? 10.46 p.m. No, the attack took place later. Does that ring a bell? You nod your head. Yes, it does, miss. Don't you miss me? Not another word. She waggles an accusing finger at you. Last, October 27th. You were in this very cab, driving a fare, and you committed a crime. That's right, sir, a crime! Ugh. I spent the whole day working like an idiot for that rotten newspaper. Do you have any idea what I do for a living? Hmm? Uh, a teacher? Did you say teacher? The idea seems practically shocking to her. Her voice takes on a sour note. I'm a sub-editor, Mr. Uh, taxi Driver. I correct mistakes. 
that a bunch of moron journalists make. There isn't a single one, not one, who knows how to write a proper sentence. I had it. Really had it. And on the night of October 27th, you cut me off. Ugh. I almost died that night. She grinds her teeth. You shudder. I crashed my car. My boyfriend's car, that is. The same guy who made yet another comment about women drivers. The neighbors called the police that night, and I made such a scene. Do you think the guy dares call himself a feminist? She pauses for a dramatic effect, as a disturbing smile spreads over her face. And, uh, what does that have to do with anything? Everything! Her voice is suddenly noticeably quieter, almost fragile. The next day, no more boyfriend, no more car, huh. I messed up a job interview with a major news outlet, a paper where people know how to write, where they follow basic rules of French grammar. Imagine for a minute, I could have stopped correcting copy for a bunch of morons. She takes a deep breath. But all because of you, because of your cab, everything changed the night of October 27th. A sad, far away look comes over her. My life has never been the same since. But her voice, her voice is bursting with fury and hatred. Forced to live with my mother while I went to apartment hunting in this wrong city where tiny studios cost an arm and a leg. So I started looking for you. The back of your neck breaks into a sweat. You can feel cold, clammy droplets about to drip down your spine. I started asking around. I bribed one of your colleagues into give me, giving me your number and, uh... A droplet of sweat starts sliding down your back. Then, I found your address! <laughs> your first one, that is. You shiver as the drop reaches your boxers. But that's your business. What matters is I did eventually get your other addresses, the real one. The droplet has reached your tailbone. It started shaking. At first, I admit, I was planning on going to your place. She shrugs her shoulders, her voice has softened a little. Just maybe to spit in your face or something like that? And then I thought to myself, No, Ludovine, maybe the guy deserves a chance, you never know. So, you're going to apologize. Go on, give it your all, take your time, take a deep breath. She breathes in deeply, then exhales. Like that. I, I don't know how to make it up to you. I don't remember what happened that evening. Um, and I could never make it up to you. Sorry for everything that happened. Your car, your ex, the job. Sorry. Shit. She heaves a sigh, dispelling her anger. All at once. It, it might have been a little much, but it was. It was. Her voice has slowed down. It was. A smile lights up her face. It was exactly what I needed to hear. 
I've been thinking about it for months, going over and over it. Every second of the accident, telling myself it could have been different, less complicated. More, I mean, less. Well, you know. She nods her head. It doesn't matter. Thanks. All her anger has evaporated. No more looks that could kill. Simmering rage or grinding teeth. My boyfriend was a jerk anyway. And then this job? Maybe it wasn't so great. She gives you a little smile. I tend to get all worked up about things. He noticed. And sometimes I take things a little too far. That too. In Paris, I guess we were quick to forget about being nice to each other, about being polite, and, uh, for a taxi driver, you're a real sweetheart. She gives a short laugh. This is what I suggest. I'm, I'm going to exit the cab. I'm going to go for a little walk in the cold to get my mind off things. I have to learn to... Her voice falters. Manage my anger. It's eating me up. She shakes her head. And then, without another look. Without another look in your way. Excuse me. Goodbye. The door opens. Then closes. You're alone in the taxi. Your head spinning slightly as if you had a drink. Just one, but something really strong. You briefly try to remember that night. Nothing. Nothing but a vague impression of something behind you. The killer's silhouette. A fleeting presence. You shake your head. There's nothing more than before. If only you had turned around. Everything would have been easier. If you had seen the face of... All at once, you start the cab. That was very interesting. She was not the person we were going to pick up, and she kind of just weaseled her way in the car, but in the end, we... helped her out. And that that's nice. Let's go pick up somebody else. I was going to pick up the guy, but, you know, it was a lady. Let's go... Let's pick up this one. We still have over half a tank of fuel, so... Three teens are running on the sidewalk to the left of you. They all yell, and I can't read the rest. Lea Gracia. I need to go to St. Uen. Uh, uh, distance is 6.16 kilometers, and we'll get 20 yen. Your next passenger does not simply get in. She throws herself in. Energetic. Lively. Chatty. She looks like she's never stops. She gives you her address and heaves a big sigh. You start driving. Oh my gosh. Oh my fucking goodness. Uh, everything okay? That... That's just... Uh, that knocked me on my ass. No other way to say it. She opens her eyes wide. I just saw the best movie called Usual Suspects. Oh, what a waste. What a fucking waste. I'm telling you, the movie is the bomb. But they let everyone take their piece of it, you know? Make parodies of it. The movie started and like five seconds in, I was standing on my seat screaming. It's the dude with the glasses right there. Shit. How stupid can you be? It's the handicapped guy. And obviously I was right. Then I just had to sit through the whole investigation. The cop wasn't too bad. He just didn't understand the whole culprit thing. Was the dude telling the story from the very beginning. Okay? Well, yeah, my friend. It was the handicapped guy. Okay, but wait. Seriously. 
great idea, but don't just give it away. See, take me, for example. I write screenplay sh shorts and uh, such, but when I have a good idea, I keep it to myself. I've got ideas, my friend. Things you wouldn't believe. They're so wild. But I don't say anything. Nothing. Too bad for everybody else. My ideas are mine, and I don't want anyone swiping them. The guys that made the movie had an incredible idea. Incredible! But they let everyone else use it to make stupid clips you watch on your phone while eating a kebab. And the movie's old, too. It came out before the internet was invented or something. And they still got ransacked. There's a parody with that guy with gray hair. Same scene, same idea. So of course I laughed when I saw the scene, you know? She sighs. <sighs> and in the end, well, you know how it's going to end if you've seen the parodies. But you still got two assholes arguing about it when you leave. Your passenger suddenly starts speaking with a southern accent. So you think it was really him? Um, yeah I do, moron. She sighs, drops the accent. Morons, they're not good enough for that movie. Not even for the parodies. She seems really annoyed. But when she starts speaking again, her voice is oddly gentle. There's a lot of ideas here. I mean, on this planet. The same ideas just go around and around. We just keep repeating them. Since we don't live all that long and we lose our minds as we get old, well, we just forget someone already had that idea. So I'm hanging on to my ideas. If someone steals them, I'll clobber them. If someone copies them, I'll clobber them too. And if someone parodies them, well... Oh wait, oh, I don't know yet. Oh, okay, I'll clobber them of course. Your passenger, your young passenger, smiles. Speaking of which, I bet you have lots of ideas. You must meet all sorts of weird people on the job, especially at night. She's very agitated. Come on, tell me. Well, sometimes... What do you mean sometimes? Be more specific. Some clients are one of a kind. Meaning... Well, they're mysterious. Silence. Well, shit. You have your pitch down. Uh, who's the weirdest passenger you've ever had? Sometimes my passengers, uh... They smell funky. She doesn't react. Or sometimes they change destinations while we're already on our way. She remains silent. Some are totally out there. They, uh... Yeah? That's enough. That's just not gonna fly. Sorry, but I mean, a pitch is also about grabbing someone's attention. What are you just saying is putting me to sleep, okay? Silence. Or maybe, maybe you're doing that on purpose to make me think you don't have any ideas, when actually, she stares at you and finally grins. You're really good at that game, aren't you? Okay, okay. I won't ask you anymore. Anything else, okay? Silence. You've almost reached your destination. Or maybe you're planning on writing a script about a taxi driver listening to a girl talking about movies. She stops. Huh, yeah, that doesn't really sound all that interesting, does it? Your movie there? Never going to work. She bursts out laughing. And you pull up in front of your young passenger's building. She pays her fare and gets out in a hurry. Good night! She goes inside, the icy wind making her shoulders hunch. You wait until the light in the lobby has gone out to drive away. 
Got some cash. Okay. We got some more people that are around. Let us go and talk to this individual. A biker courier rides by you. His big backpack, most likely filled with food, brushes against your side mirror. This guy's name is Hervé Grayou. Hey, pal, can you help me out? The distance is 12 kilometers. 40 yen. The door opens. It's Hervé. A homeless man like hundreds of others in Paris. You've known each other for years. And every now and again, he asks you for a favor. Drive him someplace. As usual, he greets you quietly, though he always seems a little on edge. Hey, hey, buddy. What's up, pup? It's a strange verbal tick that you've never really understood. You start the cab. Herbie seems pretty happy with himself today. In the rearview mirror, you watch him run his tongue over his lips, as if mentally preparing for a good meal. He catches your eye and smiles. Sorry, I'm a bit out of it today. So I see. I just had a bad week, you know? A really bad week. And then yesterday, he hesitates, as if he can't believe what he's about to say, like it's too good to be true. The lines around the corners of his eyes that show his real age wrinkle slightly. Hervé gives a little laugh. <laughs> Serious, man. I don't believe in God, you know? I don't believe in all that bullshit shit. It doesn't make any sense. Some guy with a beard in the sky, and I never got it. What people saw in him. Anyhow, God, none of us believe in him on the street. His eyes crinkle up at the corners again. I mean, we believe when the soup kitchen goes to the church. Yeah, sure, we believe in him then. He flashes teeth and lets out a harsh, raspy laugh. <laughs> a pause. And uh, that's the whole story? My story? What? His eyes light up all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, yesterday. He's talking faster now. An incessant flow. I was starving, man. It was pretty bad. Toby and I had to go through all the garbage bins in the neighborhood. Toby, he's this uh, German guy. He says he's first France. That's we're more generous here. So I was starving, right. Um, Hervé's eyes tear up. His voice drops off. A faraway look comes over him. A lengthy pause. Are, uh, are you okay, Herv? He snaps out of it. Uh, yeah, like I was saying. I was saying that, uh, yeah, I was starving. Starving. I was hanging out near the uh, supermarket on Rue Romuza. Fancy neighborhood, but not too fancy. You know, no cops. He gives you a wink. That's always a plus. And then there was like this guy. I sometimes see around a young guy, like just a kid, ID. Um, he comes out of the supermarket with his groceries. And uh, before I say a word, he hands me a can of pastoule. A can of as big as a beach ball. Hervé's face lights up. I didn't even know they made them that big. Hervé bursts out laughing, and his eyes wanders back to the street. Uh, was it good? Delicious. Cheers. He closes his eyes raises his hands and waggles his fingers. I love it when the cassoulet sausage is all mushy and it melts in your mouth. Uh, don't even need to warm it up. A smile spreads over his face. Meat mash. 
He opens his eyes. Something out of the window catches his eye. Hervé suddenly pats you on the shoulder. Uh, hold on, wait, I'm going to get out here if you don't mind. Mind. Uh. You park the cab as soon as you see an empty space. Uh, thanks, man. He's looking out the window. Yeah, I think that's him. Him. Is uh, everything all right? It is, definitely. It's time to settle a little something. Without another word, he opens the door and gets out. This time, I'm gonna get him. A moment later, he vanishes into a dark alley. Ooh. Let's sit here a minute. Your eye scans the dark, narrow street, but you can't make anything out. Then something moves in the distance, a silhouette, probably Herve, now at the run. The form darts under a street lamp. It is Herve, holding something in his hand. He immediately vanishes from sight. You sit there a minute. And then, you switch on the ignition and pull out of the parking space. No money. Um, let's see here. We have half a tank, and the day is almost up. Let's go pull into a gas station. That's probably something we should do before the end of a night, is go to a gas station. You pull over and stop at a gas station. Not a soul in sight. The fluorescent light irritates your eyes. And the smell of pee is wafting up from the space between the pumps. It's self-service here. You pay directly at the pump. The mini-mart over there must sell newspapers. The person behind the counter must see and hear things. It might be worth asking a couple questions. You sigh and get out of your taxi. The cold grips you hard. Oh, okay. So yeah, let's um fill our tank. That's cool. We actually have to manually fill it. Okay, that's the 72 yen. Let's go into the shop. You walk into the mini mart. Behind the counter, a student doing his homework lazily raises his head. Uh, yeah? Let's see here. There's a newspaper. Some other things. Let's get a newspaper. This serial killer business is crazy. The clerk cuts you off. Pointing an angry finger at the newspapers on display in front of him. Have you seen how much the police suck at catching him? You smile. You let him keep talking. Let's see. I don't know what the hell these are. These all just seem like things to make us get some cash. Let's get the cheap one. Hey, we got money. We got eight yen. So we made profit of seven. You grin at the store clerk. Good. Night, I guess. You nod and exit the shop. Okay. Let's uh, leave the gas station. You get into your taxi and drive away. Nice, with a full tank of gas, we are looking very nice. And I think with that, it seems like a pretty decent spot to end today's episode. We could go back to our house. Oh, should we read the paper first? Actually, it takes the remainder of the time up. 
we'll go back to our house at the end of, well, at the beginning of the next episode. So yeah, this is where we're ending. Hope you guys all enjoyed. If you guys did, make sure you guys leave a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you guys think of today's episode, of course. And if you're new to my channel or have been watching me for a little while and you haven't done so as of yet, feel free to subscribe to me, Mad Squash 924 and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified of my latest videos. And as I said on the next episode, we are going to begin by going to our house to end the night because I don't think we'll have enough time in the night to go and pick up anyone else, which is fine, you know? And uh, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.